Welcome to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show brought to you by the great folks at COMC, Central Ozarks Medical Center, where your health is their mission. We're having so much fun talking some local history here with the ladies from the Camden County Museum. It is the president of the museum, Daphne Jeffries, and leading the board is Noreen Albers. Ladies, thank you for coming by. We're doing a series of shows on local history. So if you've seen one already, this might be a new one. Uh, and what we're talking about this time around is the beginnings of the town of Camdenton, right? So Camdenton has not been around as, uh, as long as a lot of other towns in this area. Why is that? It's a created community. It's a created community. Kind of created when the lake came in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did they have to create a town when they built the dam? It wasn't so much a matter of have to, it was a matter of want to. Really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, they had petitioned to have the highways realigned. Right. And then there were two farms that were on top of the hill, and that property was available, and they decided to create a new county seat. Yeah, because Lynn so. Creek was the old one, mm -hmm. and highways 5 and 54 went through the old Lynn Creek, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So that was now under the water. They had to move those highways. Mm -hmm. And Camdenton was the place they wanted to kind of uh, center those things. Okay. So it was kind of done out of uh, a necessity of sorts. Um, yeah. And, and d you guys were talking about it earlier. Somebody called that the town on the hill, Camdenton. Who called it the town on the I, hill? I think the people that lived in New Lynn Creek referred oh. to it as the town on the hill because it, it, it if you're in Lynn Creek, it's on the hill. Right. <laughs> it is that, up over yeah. there. That property, when they when they purchased it for the town, was like only like $2,700. Wow. That's a deal, very, isn't it, right? It was a deal. Yeah, very good investment. And they they needed to get it. They needed to get people up there. Yeah. You know. So one thing that they did, they had a barbecue. It was a free barbecue. Huh. So that's right up my alley, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one way that they got the people up on the town to to that up on the hill. Right to go up. And there. so when they started selling lots and some of the houses in Old Lynn Creek that we'll talk about later, a few of those houses were actually moved to Camdenton, there's not very many of them really? left. Really? But that was uh, an option if you okay. had a house in, in Old Lynn Creek. Only two of those left. I think there's only two of them left yeah, in town. They have pretty well have, have dwindled away. Yeah. Um, it, it was like a, it was like a camp, the first year it was like a campsite. There was, they, first thing they did, they put a well in the right. middle of town. Water's important. So they would, you could draw well from the, you know, draw water from the city well there was no electricity. The second year, which was 1931, they did have electricity. Okay. And I think the, like the first light bill was like $16.70 <laughs> or something. But before that, I mean, it was very primitive. It, yeah. was, mm -hmm. it was definitely what, when they said, a, it described it as a campsite, it was. It was. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so they kind of do it out of necessity for highways 5 and 54. Uh, because in the old days, they both went through Old Lynn Creek, mm -hmm. so they move them so that they're not underwater now. Another name for Camdenton, I think, was the Hub City. Mm -hmm. So where did that come from? What was the thinking? Well, if, if you look at the first plans for the streets, they were laid out in a hub kind of around that center intersection. Right. And you can still see evidence of that as you drive around because they... They kind of fit around that center. Yeah, the town square. The yeah, the town square. And that town square, which is still there now, mm -hmm. but uh, back then from the pictures uh, mm -hmm. that you sent that we're looking at now, there it was a big open square, mm -hmm. basically, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was just wide open there. Well, in 1931, there were not near the cars yeah. that we have today. Right. <laughs> so it was a, it was a little more free flowing yeah. because the streets like the one in front of the courthouse and you know those little angle streets that now are closed off yeah uh, those were open you drove mm -hmm. around right. sure. those streets yeah yeah because it was a, a big spoke well, yeah anymore it was like a wheel yes but anymore we only have the hub yeah right which yeah. is where you know it's, where it's the kind light of is. outgrown that absolutely yeah. Yeah. and everything it seems like everything has always centered around the courthouse, 
But that's mm -hmm. probably not true because the courthouse wasn't there the first couple years, right? Or was it? Did they build that right away? Yeah. Second year. Yeah, this about the wow. second year. About the second year. Yeah. Dang. So they put that thing up really early well, on. Well, and, and it was only like at at the main part of the courthouse, that front part, that's yeah. all there was. And then the back part of that building was added on. And then, of course, it's only been, a, what, like 10 or 12 years since the Justice Center was built. Right. Yeah. So they've kind of added on yeah. to it. Yeah. As we've grown. And, but And I guess a, as the county seat, they kind of needed to have that courthouse there right away. Oh, well, of course, because the other one was gone. Yeah. So they put up uh, the courthouse and, and the town kind of evolved around that courthouse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over years. And you guys have been in the area for a while. I think, uh, Noreen, you've said you've been here for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I think about the same uh, for you, yeah, Daphne, for right? So yeah. you guys have seen some big changes oh, around yeah. here over the oh, years, yeah. right? Okay. So we're talking some amazing local history with some amazing ladies, right? So it's Doreen. She thinks I'm uh, I'm winding her up here, but <laughs> <laughs> so it's Daphne Jeffries, the president of Camden County Museum, and Noreen Albers uh, on the board of directors. So we'll have more with these fine ladies and some great local history right after this. Central Ozarks Medical Center voted Missouri's best and best at the lake is recruiting team members due to growth. Amazing employment opportunities for both medical and non-medical positions with competitive salaries and outstanding perks. For more information, go to the careers tab at centralozarks.org. COMC for the best medical, dental, and behavioral health care. Join a leader. Join our team. COMC where your health is our mission. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, Lake TV's got it all. We think it's hot stuff when things cool down. We spring into action when things start warming up. Of course, summer is one big huge shootout on Lake TV. And we fall in love all over again when autumn rolls around. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, Lake TV's got it all. If it's happening at the lake, it's happening on Lake TV. From the polar plunge, to festivals, parades, aquapalooza, and boat shows, Lake TV has it all. Even the granddaddy of them all, the shootouts. If you're looking for places to party, things to do, or even a new home to move into, you've got to love Lake TV. Welcome back to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show brought to you by the great folks at Central Ozarks Medical Center where your health is their mission. We're having so much fun talking local history with the ladies from the Camden County Museum. Uh, President Daphne Jeffries and Board of Director Leader is Noreen Albers. And uh, you guys kind of have some fascinating local history too, like uh, your last name is Jeffries. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you married into the family, I think, mm -hmm. Jeffries Road. Mm -hmm. in there in Osage Beach, named after your family and... and well, my husband's family. And, and <laughs> I mean, and that is a big thing nowadays because there's a big new development going in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, and definitely. that's your family land over there. Yeah, well, it was sold years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's fascinating, the yeah. local history, right? Oh, yeah. uh, so that's kind of neat. Um, we, we've been talking about the city of Camdenton, its beginnings, how it got started. Uh, it was pretty rudimentary at first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then things kind of centered around that, the courthouse there. One of the big, big things for years and years, before my time, I'd never heard of it until I was talking with... Uh, uh, some of the guys from the Foster family uh, about the J Bar H Rodeo, mm -hmm. right? And that was a huge deal in Camdenton. Why is that? Well, they drew people from all over. Um, they had lots of big names that came and performed there. Oh, yeah. Michael London and, and um, Rex Allen was a biggie. Yeah. Um, it started, they, they vac the Nelson family vacationed in this area. Uh -huh. They were on their way to somewhere else, and they came here, saw it, stopped, and stayed. And in 1952, they opened up a rodeo. It originally it could seat 13,000 people. Wow. Now, when you think about that, you know, big number of people yeah. in this small of a rural town, that's a lot of folks. That is. And it it was well backed by the community because it generated so much 
income. Oh yeah. In all in all areas. So it was it added to the growth of the area. The land where it is is where the if library. you uh, yeah where the library, the library is, is now. back there yeah. Yes, on on uh, South Five, that whole area was the um, the rodeo. And I love the picture you sent me of the rodeo and just a big open space for all the parking and everything. Yes. I mean, because this took up a, a lot of room. Because yes, of the, it did. Oh, it did. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And the owners that started the rodeo had one daughter. She inherited the property. Yeah. She still lives on the land. Wow. And she has given us an awful lot of, of good good history that we wouldn't ordinarily have. One thing that I think is really cool because I'm kind of a Western fan. Yeah. There is a fellow who made, a uh, designer who made Elvis Presley's glittery yeah. outfits and Roy Rogers, all the glittery things. Wow. They became friends with him, the Nelsons did. And he did the Nelson family, all their their fancy Western get-ups. Oh, wow. And they became, along with Rex Allen, close friends. And and so there's there's a lot of things that she's been able to share with us that we w wouldn't ordinarily How know. How cool is that? And so, I mean, all the big names of the time I saw, like the whole cast from Gunsmoke was here, uh, Clint Eastwood, and I mean, just everybody that was somebody that was Western came here yes. to the J Bar H. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. I think President Nixon even came here one year. I think I heard. I don't know. That, that might be wrong, but I thought I heard that. So don't know. Okay. Um, J Bar H Rodeo was huge, mm -hmm. and that was a Camdenton thing, mm -hmm. strictly Camdenton. Uh, Dogwood Festival is a big thing till still to this yeah. day yeah, just, around here. Just a couple of weeks ago. Was it was that something that was always a thing in Camdenton or no? It, no. No. It, when did it start, like 52? Early, very early 50s. Very early 50s. Okay, and Camdenton's been around since the 30s, mm -hmm. right? Right after yes. the dam was built. So about 20 years in, mm -hmm. uh, they decided to do the Dogwood Festival, yeah. which they still do today. What, uh, what, what's the big thing about the Dogwood Festival? Is it just because it's become grown into something around here? Well, for some of us, it's to see if the Dogwood's have bloomed before or after the festival, okay. or if they're still here for the festival. It's kind of like festival. Groundhog Day, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like that, because um, there are times when the dogwoods bloom and they're done right. before we get to the festival, oh, and other okay. times they're not even blooming yet because the weather, the weather is so iffy. I didn't even but know that. But this year, the dogwoods have been gorgeous, and they lasted through the hail, they lasted through all of the wind. It's just amazing how the dogwoods have hung on this year. Amazing. Okay. The schoolhouse. What is the schoolhouse in Camden? It's a schoolhouse. It just is, is it still there? Do they still use it? The it red gone. brick school is gone. Oh, the, okay. All we red do, is gone. The museum does have a few of the bricks. Yeah, okay. we have and the some bricks, bricks. Once that school was torn down, and it was known as the you know the red brick the, schoolhouse, the right. then folks in town, a lot of folks in town, have got some of those bricks. Some of the bricks. And they have used them, you know, as, as steps or pavement or whatever. Was that but, like near the town square, or where was that? Oh, it was right where the school is. Oh, it is. Okay, they just built a new area. school over where, there. Sure. Well, where the old part of the school kind of is, you know, on South on the Five. Hill there, right. On South Five, yeah. Where the stadium is and stuff like that. And the Reveille was the newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. It had uh, been in Old Lynn Creek. Yeah. Um, the Reveille goes clear back to the before 1860, I think. Yes. Okay. When so it was in Lynn Creek and then moved yeah. to Camden. Then it moved, uh huh. Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. Probably because the county seat yeah. moved. And and the fellow who had the Reveille um, on his tombstone, he's buried in Old Lynn Creek Cemetery, and on his tombstone it says, Editor for 50 years. Wow. There you go. He and his father brought the Acorn Press, which yep. people can see at the museum, brought that Acorn Press on a, on a, on a wagon. You know, pulled wow. by mules. The, the, bar, that was a big the barge thing. came up to Tuscumbia, and mm -hmm. then they put it on a wagon and brought it over, over to Lynn Creek. In this amazing history, the ladies from the Camden County Museum, Noreen Albers and uh, Daphne Jeffries, just filling us in on so many stuff. This is a series of shows, so be sure to keep uh, tuning in to watch all of these different shows. Thank you for joining us for Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show. <laughs>